Welcome to Invest Insights. I'm Abby Malone. I'm joined by Dr. Stephen Clasco, the president of Thomas Jefferson University and CEO of Jefferson Health with 14 hospitals in Philadelphia and New Jersey and two campus universities. He joins us for our series on the COVID-19 pandemic and the business community's response to it. Please do like this video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos like this. Stephen, um, I wanted to start off by first looking at the current surge. Is that what you're experiencing right now, or what is the hospital's environment right now? Yeah, so um, we've probably hit our surge and are plateauing, uh, probably less than we feared. So I think that's a good thing, and I, I think that owes a lot to uh, Philadelphia. had a pretty coordinated response as it relates to social distancing. The major health systems all got together, us and University of Pennsylvania and Temple and others, uh, Mainline Health. So we've had a pretty good response. So I think we're, um, if you look at my 14 hospitals, we're probably about 60% full as far as the census and maybe our ICUs are about 70%. But we're, we're very confident that we will not exceed our capacity. Uh, we'll not have to go to field hospitals and that kind of thing. So a lot of kudos. Uh, to the heroes on the front line. We were very early, Abby, in uh, mandating masks for all our, all our employees. Uh, we were very early in N95s. We spared no expense in even renting ventilators. So fortunately, we've had less employees uh, that have been stricken or under investigation than others. And again, that, that's kept us the kind of positive feedback cycle that happened in Italy or New York from happening. In That's really wonderful to hear. Uh, and also, in, back in 2014, you were heavily investing in telehealth, which really enabled you to be ahead of the curve when we were starting to experience the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, can you talk yeah, uh, to me, me just, about... Let me just, let me yeah, just sure. say a couple of things. Uh, the two things that we did, I think, at Jefferson that really helped us is, one, we had led something called Pan Surge in Pennsylvania when Ebola happened. And um, we kept that going. So um, we had had 60 days PPE on hand when we started. It's not like we predicted this pandemic, but we predicted that there could be someday a pandemic. The second thing, as you mentioned, in 2013, we invested almost $50 million in something called Jeff Connect. Um, and we had unlimited bandwidth. So we were able to go from 50 telehealth visits a day to over 3,500 now without, without turning on a switch. So I think those two things really helped Jefferson, I think, be, uh, be in, in better shape, frankly, than, than, than other health systems. That's extraordinary. And how do you see that moving forward, telemedicine and, and possibly opening up to innovations in general that you're experiencing coming out of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. So one of my roles is I, I'm the co-chair of the Board of Stewards for Davos, for the World Economic Forum on the Digital Economy. And for some reason, I can we could talk about the reasons, but healthcare has escaped the consumer revolution and the digital revolution until now. I don't think we go back. Um, I think that the fact is that a good part of the reason that we escaped it is because everybody was incented on sick care. Everybody was incented on the most, frankly, expensive, inefficient way of providing care. Come to my hospital. And there's a great Upton Sinclair quote I like to use. It's hard to get somebody to do something when their salary depends upon them not doing it. So telehealth would get paid $50. If somebody came to my emergency room, they'd get paid $1,500. I think that'll change. I'm, I'm, I'm working with a company that's actually looking at pregnancies and monitoring, and where we can monitor pregnancies at home instead of having to come to the hospital. Now think about post-COVID. If somebody your age gets pregnant, the chances that even post-COVID, they'll say, well, let me get this straight. You want me three times a week to drive into Philadelphia, pay $35 to park, go to a place where there are a lot of sick people are, to go up to a small room, get a monitor that other people have had on them, placed on me, so that two hours later a nurse can tell me I'm okay, when I can do that at home while I'm watching little fires everywhere? I don't think so. So I think we'll start to see a little bit of a consumer revolution of, hey, if you could do this during the pandemic, why can't you do it now? The disenfranchised and elderly population are some of the hardest hit by COVID-19. How is Jefferson Health working uh, on these demographics during the uh, pandemic? Yeah, boy, that, that's, a, that's another great question. I think, um, well, I think one of the real tragedies of American healthcare, we have a lot of things to be proud of, but one of the real tragedies is we haven't addressed social determinants of health. Um, we have, uh, in Philadelphia, we have among the greatest discrepancy in life expectancy of, of any city in the country. 
um, just by zip code. So I think, I think, I actually think some of those digital changes, if we do them right, Abby, can start to, to really hit those things. So just, I'll give you a couple examples. For us, um, our biggest users by percentage wise of our Jeff Connect platform are, are the homeless population. Because they often don't have cars, they don't have money to, but they do have cell phones. And we've, we've actually provided free care to them. We've provided free care to pregnant uh, folks that are undocumented. Why? It has nothing to do with politics. It's just that it doesn't matter whether you're Republican or Democrat. If you get pregnant, you're going to have a baby in nine months. And if you don't take care of them, that baby's going to end up in the NICU. We're working with drone companies. Think about food deserts. Food deserts exist because I can walk to three Whole Foods or, or Trader Joe's. Folks in other areas can only walk to a bodega that has, you know, Fritos and, 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 and Cokes. But if you do drone deliveries, that changes all that. So, so the key for me and what I spend a lot of my time is making sure that these new technologies don't just make the wealthy healthier, that they really start to address social determinants. Once we start to come out of COVID-19 uh, and the social distancing has lessened, how would you recommend to the public that we stay, continue to stay safe and that we don't see a second surge? Yeah, look, I think um, healthcare and, and frankly, society will not be the same for quite a while. And I think we just have to get over that. So the two things I'd say is we have to get away from a one size fits all mentality. There's a big difference between having 50,000 people at Yankee Stadium versus, um, you know, saying we can open up a small restaurant, you know, so I, and I think there's way too much sort of attention paid. What, when can people be back at, you know, Yankee Stadium or watching the Miami Dolphins? And that's, a, that's not going to happen till, till really there's a vaccine. I think that we need a nuanced approach of, of really a phasing this in. What will change, I, I compare it to 9-11, Abby. Um, you know, um, you know, if, if before 9-11, if, if I was there 15 minutes before a flight, I could dash through the airport and they would just let me through security. Well, clearly that's changed and we've gotten used to it. I think for quite a while, you know, there will be limits to how many people can be in a restaurant. You'll, you'll have to show just act like you have to show your passport to do travel. You have to show your COVID negative card. I think you might maybe get your temperature checked and there's all sorts of new digital technologies where you can almost have on your forehead, you know, is, is my temperature below 100. I think we'll, we'll just get used to that. Every week we'll check our COVID status. How good, you know, negative this week I can go out. I think uh, in a place like Jefferson, we have 35,000 employees. We'll probably get to much more of a shift mentality. You're going to work from six to three. You're going to work from three to, to 10, uh, especially for administration. So we don't have we don't have you know, large gatherings together. So I think we'll get used to that till the vaccine comes. And then once the vaccine comes, it'll be just like polio or smallpox or whatever. Hopefully we'll learn from this and start to look at different ways of making sure we have enough Q-tips and swabs and masks because it might not be the last pandemic. And should the community want more information about Jefferson Health, where would you direct them? So we're very, very active on social media. In fact, we have a, a chief social media medical officer. So either at TJUH, Thomas Jefferson University Hospital on Twitter, or Jefferson Health uh, on, uh, on Facebook, or my, my Twitter page, which is at S-Clasco, S-K-L-A-S-K-O. Well, thank you again. That was Dr. Stephen Clasco, the president of Thomas Jefferson University and CEO of Jefferson Health. My name is Abby Maloney. You've been watching Invest Insights, and please don't forget to like and subscribe to watch more videos like these. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.